Look at that guy. He's so angry. You say it uh, Yo, three times. Yo, I'm, I'm you... bitter with the booth. John Roca, a lot of things to get to with you. Hey, how's it going? First, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I Hi, like Roxy. your jacket, man. Thanks. That's the only compliment you'll get from me today. Wow. Ro- uh, Ro- just so wow. you know the what temperature of the room. We've been <laughs> just kidding. Heatily, we, we, we've been debating fast food. Yeah. But before we got to that, Roxy didn't think that I was able. She didn't think she could insult me at yeah. all. She's trying to come up there, with some sort of way to burn me and roast me. And I say it's not really not that hard. It's not that hard, no. Really? What oh, do you there's got? There's so much about Mark you can roast about. The what when, are the when he used to be things? fat, the, his weird large eyes. Well, the fat thing is the Sean Maroney. <laughs> I mean, are your eyes big? Are your eyes big? What are no. you talking about? I, I feel have like my a, eyes are bigger than I've, your I've eyes. Been a, I've been accused by comics of note of yeah. either having uh, fish eyes yes. or uh, being a ventriloquist puppet. It's the Ross Dress for Less really? tops that unsettle me, too, that he wears. Those I like things. that top. Shit. You like that top? What is a, what, why are you a ventriloquist? I just kind of look like a puppet. <laughs> I don't see it. Your eyes get big when you get a hand up your ass. That's the way it works. Like, when Jim Cummings comes in here, he'll probably good. want to do the voice of Mark. <laughs> yeah. We should see if he can. He can. We could, yeah. I'll yeah. talk, and then Jim will do the voice. What are you going to say? I'd be into that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, Roka, just to yeah. put a cap on, on our fast food conversation, yes. you're going to a fast food joint. Where are you going? What are you ordering? What time of day is it? I'm going to give it a That's noon. A good it's too easy to, to make noon. it your closer. Yeah. I go Taco Bell. Yeah, well, uh-huh. I get the uh, I get the Mexican pizza, and I get the. Yeah, that's uh, good. I like the Mexican what's, pizza. What's the non fried pizza? What? Is it, what? Is it actual pizza? Or? No, no, it's too uh, like uh, it's like a tortilla chip, but two large circular tortilla chips. Like tostadas. With, uh, tostadas so with like uh, beef inside, ground beef inside. Cheese. Cheese yeah. on top. Cheese melted on top. Yeah. And the uh, pico de gallo. What is Mexican pizza? Yeah. How how far in yeah. Boston are you from? Yeah. <laughs> Deep. Oh, you, you come man. from it at Docks? What's going on? Oh, so that's on? the thing. People know what that is. She's like, if it's not a Dunkin' Donuts, I don't get it. <laughs> Donkeys. <laughs> well, if Roka's getting Mexican pizza from Taco Bell yeah. for lunch, that explains a lot of his stand-up material because... <laughs> <laughs> nice segue, Mark. There are some things that were mentioned <laughs> that, by, by you on stage, and that's yeah. kind of what, the reason I want to have you in here is that we all had a great time Friday night. I wasn't here yesterday. I don't know if it was talked about or not, but I really enjoyed everybody. The fans were great. Uh, I worked with a lot of uh, military veteran groups, and yeah. some of them were able to come out, too. That was awesome to see them and you opened yes uh, for me uh, yeah. am- amongst others right right josh and uh josh ken and were ken great hosted yeah, they hosted. came on stage did about 15 minutes yeah. then roca went up and did uh his allotted time of five minutes he stretched it to nine because he's a pro <laughs> christian said that was you kind of throwing him to the wolves by putting him in that spot oh mm, i didn't know that that i would i would oh, th- is that what he said mark i, I don't want to misspeak yeah he, said... he, he had said something along the lines of like Woo, like for it's him to go spot. out first, mm-hmm. um, but I but I said but you know Josh and Ken warmed up the the audience, but he was saying yeah bring in a, another comic first and then Roka. So what was the decision making? The decision making process was as simply as I want to go by time. Yeah, and so Roka was going to do a tight five, and also I think it's much as to protect the newer comic as it is anything else because the other. Comedians on the show, yeah. T.J. Washington, Candace, are all heavy hitters mm-hmm. that I know are going to crush, and so that's a tough thing to follow yeah. if you're not prepared for it. Even if you know you have the room, so I wanted Roka to get up there and just enjoy the show and enjoy the moment more so than worried about following somebody who's been doing it for a decade. Yeah, that's a good idea. And yeah. as a producer, that's the smart way to go. You put me up first because I'm the newer person, and you respect the other talents of doing it longer. So if I bomb, you have all these other people who are a lot funnier who are going to uh, line it up for Mark to come in and kill it at the end. So but it's, it's been – I've done it both ways. When he opened for me in New York, I think we had three comics go yeah, up, yeah. and then you went up, and mm-hmm. then I went up right after yeah. you. So it's fine either way. Just your thoughts because you weren't on the show yesterday. I was not on the show yesterday, no. So just your thoughts uh, as far as being the uh, being there, being the night. How did you feel going on stage, coming off stage when you were yeah. there? What did it feel like for you, your fourth time doing stand-up? Four, yeah, it was a little nerve-wracking. It's always going to be nerve-wracking walking up there. And, I, you know, everyone has advice, and they're all well-intentioned advice. They all have, like, say they're like, work on your set, work on your set. But I'm the kind of person that I'm still new. So for me, every time I walk up there, I want to do something new because I don't know how many people have seen me.
me do other stuff. So I'm like, I'm going to try. I, I just I made a decision as I was driving to the club, like I'm going to because uh, I'm going to do something that is embarrassing to talk about. My friend CC Pleasance, who's a great stand up comic for years, I used to date her for, for a little bit. She told me like she texted me. She's like, just talk about something that's embarrassing about you. That helps the audience feel like a connection with you. And your so, big penis was that embarrassing. Well, too. I was joking. Yeah, I started out with that just to be playful about it because I was going to be, oh, my, yeah. There it is. My big penis. <laughs> it's hard. I have to get a second seat on the plane. But no, what I really got into was. Uh, you're, you're crushing again? Yeah, no. <laughs> That's Beardo being sarcastic. Uh, <laughs> I know what he's doing in there. But no. Um, but then I started talking about this story, the, this real story I had where I shit my pants. And I, like, as an adult human that happened, like, I think last year, driving home from Wood Ranch after Collider. Legitimately <laughs> happened driving all the way. And it's a, it's a story I told to Alicia and Grace uh, last year. And they were just on the floor laughing about it. So I was like, I'll give it a shot. We'll see how it plays, and if I bomb, I bomb. But it's you know you gotta you gotta try stuff out. How to so. play? It, it felt like I got a lot of good, a lot of good laughs, not like stand up uh, ovation laughs after I was done. But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to figure out what's my voice on that stage. What's my style? Am I gonna be a story comic? Am I gonna be a joke comic? Am I gonna like what kind of? So I'm still new. I don't know what I'm gonna be. So I'm and still you had figuring never it out. done that before. No, I never done like a that story. Wasn't your comic Con story. No. Or that wasn't. Oh, you mm-hmm. didn't? No, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never yeah, told we, that story. Instead. I mean, we talked the thing I. Said and I told him is like how fearless he was. Yeah. Like I can't do that. Like I can't do a stand up thing. I have great respect for everybody that gets up there and does it. Mm. And he went up there and just fucking did it. You know. And it, you know, some of it played like for me. I was like, yeah. I don't know about this, but <laughs> <laughs> you were you were fearless. And I think you need that. And Christian mm. brought up like that's what you need in, in stand up. You oh, go yeah. out there if it doesn't work. You you can tell me, Mark. I mean, you're the more professional. Well, what's funny is I just am an audience member because I, I was talking to Ken after the show, and, and Ken and Josh uh, have done stand up plenty yeah. of times, oh, yeah. but they they've been on stage most recently together. And what Ken told me is that he's just he's a lot more comfortable is the wrong word, but it's like you just feel like you can get up there and riff a little bit more when you have somebody else on stage with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's a little easier for his preparation because Ken is one of those guys, like when he did the news, he really wanted to write the jokes and he really wanted to get everything mined out. And so yeah. now when he's going up with Josh, it, it you just play off each other. And so when you're the first individual on stage by yourself and you realize you don't have that safety net of, okay, well, you say something wacky now mm-hmm. and it's just your time, yeah. then it, it can be a little can be a little intimidating. Yeah, I mean, working with Josh would be fun because, like, when we do the sports book, we're basically improving that whole show based right. off the lines. But we have a great chemistry, and Josh is as fearless, more fearless than I am, you know. And so it's fun to play off of him. Um, but I, I, I appreciate the comment, Riley. But it's, it's, it's more like I'm at that age where I don't give a shit. Like I just woke up yeah. there and I'm going to talk about whatever I want to talk about. So I, I will say I think that that is my favorite part of you is how I, I told you this the other day. Mm. Like you just yes. Okay. Yeah. Christian was like, you're yeah. doing this. You're like, yeah. yeah. Um, you're trying this. You're like, yes. Like, I have been dicking around with this stand up thing for, I don't know, a few months now. Mark can attest to it. I, oh, I no. keep, just because I'm interested in it. I'm yeah. interested. I don't know. So why interested that you did not show up on Friday. Oh, yeah. because I was at Blanket Jackson's <laughs> Halloween party. Um, I, I Wait, just, that's I, a real thing. Yeah, that's a real thing. Like Michael Jackson's child. Yes. How what? Did, yes. How does I will one tell you guys get... all about it. See, that's a story. That's a stand-up right there. That's yes. a stand-up story. That experience. Yeah. It, I, so I think I have stories, but mm. I'm scared shitless, be, and there's mm. no other way to put that. And so the fact that you're actually getting up there and doing that. I think it's pretty incredible. Yeah. I didn't well, see I you, and that. I don't know if bombing or not. I think that that's so dope. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say you bombed at all. No, I didn't. No, I'm I, not saying you did. I'm no, saying no, no, no matter no, no. how. No, no, to, to your point, there? you don't know if uh, you bombed or, or like the, the reaction was good. Beardo wasn't there. Do Beardo you, was not there. Beardo Do you always was know? not there. Do you always know after if you bombed or not? Oh Do yeah. You, every every comic will will tell you something different. Like sometimes you get off stage and and you think the room was too good. Sometimes you think that they it was just too sucked. Good? Yeah, because it's just it, it's too easy. Oh. I remember hearing a story about Letterman where he was trying to run a Tonight Show set that he was doing at the Comedy Store. And he crushed, and he got off stage, and you know another comic, Diane Nichols actually uh, went up to him, and she was telling me the story. She said, "Hey, great set," and he's like, "Ah, they were too hot. I can't, because wow. they're just so juiced up." He really wanted to know if the jokes actually work, and mm-hmm. if they just feel like they're such big fans already. And you get that sometimes, like, like the set that I would do in front of like the the Collider fan, or Schmoes fans what have you mm-hmm. might be different than what I would do at a normal club but it's pretty similar like I like to yeah, I like to bring I like to bring me on stage regardless so it's just knowing the room and knowing that if you can do 10 minutes on a Mandalorian 
that yeah. you can do. Two minutes on a Mandalorian. Right. So, but Riley was not the only person from the office that was in the showroom. Oh, no. The theater <laughs> on Friday night. We sold it out, but luckily a lot of people from the office were able to make it in. So, Copster, you're in the control room. You were there. Hi. Yeah. Alex was there. Um, Hi. Yeah. I, and I, I think Perry was <laughs> there. Oh. Wendy was there. Wendy. Winnie the Pooh was there. Oh. Frank was there. <laughs> Adam was there. <laughs> so is there anybody currently in the office, and we can start with the guys in the control room that were there, that would want to oh. review either Roka's set quickly or Ken and Josh's set? Uh, Alex, would you like to re review Roka's set? <laughs> you don't want your set reviewed? Uh, Roka. I don't. I, <laughs> was it good? I mean, they can. Did it's, it go well? It Alice was, was really good. good. Alice yeah. was great. Alice is always funny. Oh. Was the room too no, hot? Was, I don't like compliments. Hot room. Um, it, it was a very hot room. They, they were great. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. Great fans. Hot we, in a good way. We have the best fans. To oh, that's my review. A lot of you guys Alex are good. Oh, the silence okay. uh, was the review. Okay. What's your review, Alex? Uh, I told you on Friday, like, uh, you have... Uh... Boy. <laughs> Hello. Searching for you the have a great. You have a great presence. It's just that uh, some of the jokes went on a bit too long. For yeah. Me. So I'm mm -hmm. learning okay. that yeah, and as I go you're along. Getting you're getting more experience, and mm -hmm. I can't wait to see what you have next time. Yeah, I get tighter and tighter, and I realize what doesn't work and what does work. And I watched your set for 21 minutes. Like That set was fantastic. And I picked up like a bunch of techniques watching Mark work, how he takes the audience on a journey from subject to subject, and how he wraps up one subject, segues into it, and even uses the crowd to bounce off them to jump into another segment. That's brilliant stuff as I'm watching. Oh, I can do that. I can do that. I'm still nervous. So for me, I'm like, oh, I don't know when this ride ends, but I'm going to talk like this and do this. As I get tight, as I figure out how to do it tighter and tighter, I think it'll be, I think I'll have okay sets. I think I'll be all right. Isn't but it's that just, why Christian is saying that you should do the same material yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah. Because that, that's the purpose, right, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you want to hammer out a good five minutes before you, I, I don't say like you can only do this five minutes and that's right. what you have to hammer out because if shit's not working, it ain't working. You got to ditch and try to get something else. But mm. how do you know when it's time? Time to ditch. Yeah, I don't. It, it everybody's different. It's if, organic. if you work it three times, if you work it ten times, look at it like you're trying to report a news story. You need a few different independent sources to confirm something before you can go <laughs> run with it. So you need to do it in different rooms. You can't yeah. just do it in one room night after night and see if it gets a response. You got to go to a different room, different environment, different kind of crowd, different demographic. Yeah, all that stuff. I will say one thing though. What was great about being there was you guys like, uh, and I want to let the fans know there was no coddling. There was no like, oh, you're gonna be all right. No, Mark is very, Mark goes into stand up mode. Jay was in stand up mode. All these people are in stand up mode. What which is their stand up mode? Look which like? is if you walk into the if you walk into the pit, no one's gonna hold your hand through this process. You're an adult. You've willingly decided to do this. So people are going to like Jay was like. You're probably going to bomb. You're probably going to suck, but just focus on this. And Alice is like, you're going to be fine, kid. And there was nothing else. That's it. And so you've really got to stand on your own two feet and show that you're willing to walk out there. And afterwards, Jay was very complimentary. You very So it was like you you earn a little bit of respect just walking out on stage and doing it. But you got to take a little bit of the shit in the locker room. It's very similar to sports. What I, is your end game here? Would you like to be a stand-up comedian? Would oh, you like to travel around? Jesus. And... I don't even know if that's something that I could be a co-headlining tour with Roka and Roxy. I, I think. I think what you do for the veterans, I think that would be fun to find uh, an avenue into that. Because being a person who served for eight years, like go overseas, and yeah, stuff. go overseas and tell jokes to people. Like that would be a blast because that's a those are people I know and relate to. And if I can make them laugh, considering what they're going through, that would be awesome. So, but I don't have an end goal just yet, Roxy. It's more a matter of like I'm figuring it out as I go along, and I'm only doing it because Ellis puts me on these shows. I don't go hunting for open mics. Well, it's interesting in the chat room right now. And Copster, let's see if we can get somebody oh, yeah. uh, somebody else's opinion in the uh, the studio. If you want to go take the roving microphone, this is my first time Walking running around, the ship guys. with a Bye, roving microphone. What You're doing think? great, man. The chat room is mixed on just whether Roca truly earned the opportunity to be on there, just because he's <laughs> such a new comic. Like some people are saying, he needs to go do open mics before he can come back and do another one what of these think? shows. So. I think that it's up to Roca. I enjoy having him on the shows. I'm not going to put him on every show that I do, but I think that it's it's fun for him, and he entertains the crowd. He brings a certain bravado. He brings a, a just a young pluckiness. <laughs> Just a, hey, I can do this, and I think it's exciting for everybody. So I, I'm on board with having Roke on a show. I heard one of your jokes went over really well. I think was a copster who said that, or who, one of you oh. guys in there said you yeah, got a good the, laugh at. 
nobody wants to shit in Target. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought yeah. that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Which, Which is true. true. I've it's seen true. that, that, I mean, that La Brea at Target. Right. Well, I'm only saying that because yeah. that's feedback, right? Yeah, yeah. That's Especially from Cobster, who does not hand, you know, give me... Trust me, you go to a Target bathroom, oh, there's a number broken. of people in there that just made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. Bro, okay, guys, I said it on yesterday's show, and I'm not going in full heart. I, I went to your set completely open mind because I wanted oh, I to love that. you and I wanted to love everyone else there. I just think the material was that funny, but the yeah. performance of yourself being up there, there's a couple things like yeah. I wouldn't have gone up there with the belt. My thing is is just... That was Christian. That was Christian. Oh, that was shocker. Christian. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, but honestly, um, I think... Oh, why didn't you from, say that From yesterday? my own personal thing, like I would try to not assume that people know you, you know, but but I, again, you're, you're using your advantage. For me, I would like uh, be challenged by it mm -hmm. to try something and not cater to you know, like if knowing that they're all Collider fans. But right. since it is your own, it's only your fourth set. Mm -hmm. Then you know it's understandable to do so. But yeah, you know, again, you know, you went up there. That's ballsy to do that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it. But yeah. you know, that's hey, a fair critique. That's up to you. I think Cops, that's a fair we, are, we are told not to talk about his balls. So, <laughs> so balls, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, no balls. I'm going to go ask the crowd. I'm going to go find some people out here. Okay, cops are going to go rogue. And again, a, a lot of people are just asking what, what Roka's next move in stand-up is going to be, what Roxy's first move into yeah. stand-up is going to be. And some people asked if Roka ever got heckled. And I'm just going to I'm gonna shut this down right now, is that I don't really enjoy heckling stories talked about on the air because I just feel like it gets into the audience and then they think, oh, well, maybe I could yell something at a future show that would be funny. Mm -hmm. It's never cool. I saw one person that told me they were going to a show that I was going to be on the Roka's going to be on the way. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna heckle Roka and I just looked at him like no you're not no you're not you don't do it it's not cool we don't need your help just yes. don't even worry about it you can you can enjoy the show you can go crazy you can clap you can cheer you can do all that stuff it just never even if it's you think it's coming from a good place I promise you it's not what's the difference between that mark and I remember when we used to do the schmoes no show we used to do the tweets, read the angry tweets out loud. Oh, yeah. Remember? What, what was yeah. that segment Release called? The Release, Release the Trolls. Release the Trolls. Unleash yeah. the Trolls. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between showing support for the trolls in that kind of way, reading their responses on air, and saying, talking about the hecklers? Because that doesn't ruin your flow when you're doing a live performance and somebody shouts something out in the same room, yeah. that can potentially ruin the flow. Mm. So if somebody, if somebody writes like an angry YouTube comment, I... You can I, avoid I that, yeah. Right? Yeah. You're here when you're flowing, mm -hmm. right, on stage, and you're saying this and say, "Yeah, you suck." You're like, yeah, and yeah, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Whatever it may be, mm -hmm. I totally get it. Do I you totally have it. to respond to them? What a heckle? Yeah, or can you like push through? It it, it depends. It, sometimes you just try to fly above it. Other times you just get it done. I think you I just, was just convinced not to do comedy here's anymore. A, you, <laughs> I you don't think I, I could handle that. I well, would be you got to build to that. Yeah, I would just stop and be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, I can't. That's happened. Yeah. That um, works. Well, you should watch Patton Oswalt handling a heckler. There's a lot of videos on YouTube of these professional comics handling hecklers on stage. It's some of the best stuff you'll ever see. Yeah, I feel like with hecklers that, like, you're stupid for doing this because automatically, if you're a stand-up and you're up there, you're quick-witted, you're, you're, you, you have a set planned out, you have the spotlight, you have the mm. microphone. A heckler is going to lose every time because you're going up against somebody that is going to be quicker than you. Mm -hmm. I've seen hecklers, or like they think they're smart, and then the the, the stand up just destroys them. Like, yeah. and I love seeing that. You can usually tell the ones that really want attention yeah. are the ones that I don't that I don't give it to. Right. The one if you're just drunk or you're loud or you're talking and you're not really paying attention to the show, those are the ones that I'll really lean into and mm -hmm. get it. Done. I mean, I always like to get it done quickly because I don't I don't. It's not a part of the show that I wanted mm -hmm. to do. So. so what is it like? Sh when you shame them, then they shut up for the rest of the time. Usually, yeah. that's you just awesome. Kind of get out the old Game of Thrones bell <laughs> and just shame. <laughs> because most of the time shame. they're there with a date or something. So if you destroy them, they're not going home with that girl. Yeah. Like that's, <laughs> that's just how it works. Or man, whatever it is, like wow. they, if you shame them correctly. They will. They will be like uh, this. Uh, you know, just so small. So small, and will not look in any way like you know, like a strong person at all because How you got embarrassed. Embarrassing. Your if you're with somebody mm. to heckle, that is so fucking yeah. embarrassing. I would never ever sleep with somebody who did that. Yeah. It usually tends to be alcohol yep. or, or something else. Some yeah. other substances that are not served at the club are yeah. involved. Uh, cops, are we are we roving around? Do we have any? Yeah, I've been sitting out here. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to waiting. Man, please. <laughs> no, I'm I'm here with Frank. Frank was there that night. Oh, Say no. hi, Frank. Oh, no. Hi, Frank. 
Oh, said, God, I, Frank. Uh, Hashtag Frank, death talk. They want you to review uh, the night overall. Take it away. Oh, God, he's grabbing the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Can I hear? All right, there we go. So I don't know how to juggle, right? So I'd love this. Huh. Oh, if no. somebody goes on stage and attempts to juggle, who am I to criticize that? <laughs> if somebody goes on stage and drops the ball again and again and again and again, I can't sit here and criticize that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Roka got up there, which is more than I've done. God. I will say, however... Ellis, if you're just giving away charity sets, after seeing after seeing that literally anybody can go up there, I started working on a set myself. Oh, I so bet you did, Frank. One give out. No one wants five minutes on Tim on uh, Tim Burton, Frank. On what? <laughs> Tim Burton. Yeah. I'm, I would assume that Roxy's up next, but she's been talking about this for a month and hasn't done anything. Oh. So oh. if you've got an open set, that's, tr- that's a true. I'm working on my David. routine. Okay, well, Frank, you're it, up next. It, if I may, it, Frank did tweet something out a while ago that if there was going to be like another comedy mm. event kind of thing, Frank said that he would offer to host it. So I would like Frank's review of Josh and Ken's hosting style and how Frank your hosting style might contrast to theirs. Uh, Josh and Ken, big fans of them. Uh, they were great hosts. If I had to uh, sum up their hosting style, it was controlled chaos. It was wonderful, and like the energy was there. It was great. Oh, I see. It would be very different from my hosting style. But what would your hosting style be? Well, Roxy, you'll have to come and see. <laughs> see what? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Remember, remember uh, uh, the old count. The Dracula guys that About would be on two, count, count three, tw- like they were on four. Channel Twenty back on the East Coast. That's basically Frank's hosting style. It would be uh, that he's just he's just a, a Muppet vampire. Yeah, kind of a Muppet there. vampire. Yeah. Fun joke. Uh, uh, take a chance uh, on me, Ellis. <laughs> okay, no, I, I smell a Twitter poll coming because it seems like a lot of people mm. want to throw their hat in the ring. So you could oh, have a I poll take mine out. <laughs> where it's Roxy, <laughs> get up there. Roka. I don't have to. <laughs> and to be honest, like like the shows are not. It's not like people ask about hecklers and they're like, oh, is it just like a insane asylum? Is it like the cuckoo's nest and just people? No, it, it, it's not that at all. It's the show starts and you have a great host like Josh and Ken or Frank, and they control everything. And then you just go up, you do your set. If something minor does, it's always minor. It's mm-hmm. never this like huge thing. Like somebody stood up and made great points and had a, you know, had a platform and they had a gavel and they bang. It's just like they yell something. You, it's then you move on. You move on. It's yeah. it, it's not that it's not that intimidating. I got heckled so. on Sunday. Hey, what? I got heckled on Sunday because someone tweeted at me their review of my thing. Oh, a fan. They, they were there, and then, you, and then they came in hard? They came in hard, yeah. They were like, it was terrible. And I was like, well, why don't you come to the meet and greet and say it to my face? Like, if you had a problem with how I do it. But, well, the, the meet and greet costs extra. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They, they got, probably weren't even at the show. No, they probably weren't. Copster, do you have somebody yeah. else that you're, uh, that you're with right now? Yeah, let's go to Wendy. Hi, Wendy. My face, motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Wendy's over here looking at bad things on her right, computer. So I would say I, I would say Frank's up. review overall Roca set was not positive, but I think oh, that it was complimentary of Roca for for having the nerve to get up there. And Roca has gotten some positive reviews. So right now, if this was a Rotten Tomatoes thing, I would say Roca is sitting at around fresh, but like in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I let's see how fair. let's see what, how Wendy wants to weigh in. So Wendy, we're uh, reviewing the the Friday night show. Where everyone did their their stand up comic stuff. So review the show overall, and then uh, what would you score uh, Roka set on a Rotten Tomatoes score? Uh, okay, the show overall I thought was so much fun. I really liked all the comedians that were lined up. I really enjoyed T's set, and the lady who came out right before Alice's set. She Candace. was Candace. Candace Thompson. Candace Thompson was hilarious. Yeah. I need to see more of her. Uh, Josh and Ken killed it as the host, as I expected them. The spotlight on the stage, however, was a pretty big problem for me because like half the people looked a little washed out. And, Agreed. Uh, Trust me. Ooh, getting that a little technical. Not, uh, that I like took this. an hour to lock down. Um, I liked everybody said. I think I'm going to talk about Roka. Is this what? <laughs> this is yes, please, please. Okay, so <laughs> I know this is Roka's fourth set. Um, he said that on the on the set too. He did say that. Okay, so shows how much I was listening. Uh, sorry, Roka. <laughs> Love you much. Um, so I think it one takes a lot of courage to go up there and do what he does because I know I couldn't do it and I would have just like probably projectile vomit it into the audience because that's how scared I would have been. I didn't think he was going to take it in the direction he went and tell the story and big props to you for sharing that with the world. She talked about the poop? Big props. The poop or the penis? Um, Both. Don't 
I, I think the Comic Con set was a stronger set for oh, me. I would agree with that. Um, but I applaud his his courage for going up there and sharing that story. She's shaking. She's shaking her head while she's saying that too. <laughs> she's lying to me right now. My head. I, I, I'm not shaking my head at all. I don't know. What's the score? What would you score it on a Rotten Tomato score? Is that like percentage or well, how does how does it work? Yes, I would. Yes. Well, it's not actually how Rotten Tomatoes uh, works. <laughs> Whatever, Roxy. Just to be clear. percentage. <laughs> 79 percent oh okay. hey that's fresh that's pretty high it's not yeah. too bad it's not right. certified fresh but it's fresh so okay. that's, uh, abo- that's above average Custer, certified fresh. how many more how many more people out there do we have that uh, that we have to review before we got we go Perry right here uh-oh she's no <laughs> no she's giving me a guilty smile okay Perry's like oh I don't want you to ask me to rate them <laughs> trust me I don't like it either but they're having me do it fine he was fine Oh, you're asking me my actual score. Yeah. If I had to give a rating, we're, we're talking about Roka, right, still? Yeah. If I had to give a rating to Roka's performance based on how unforgettable it is, it's going to be a 10 out of 10. Hey! <laughs> oh, okay. You stood out. Why, there you why, go. why was it so unforgettable? Why was it so unforgettable? Because that story is seared in <laughs> my brain for the rest of my life, and I'll never look at mac and cheese from Wood Ranch the same way again. There you go. Don't order mac and cheese from Wood Ranch. Okay. Shit's pwn. I, okay. shit is pwn. I hate cheese. Uh, thank you, Perry, for, thank you, Perry. Uh, for, for weighing in, too. Copster, there's one more voice that I really would like to get if they're in the studio. Uh, I cannot find him. Okay, well. I think he ran away. If, if he ran away, then that's fine. Who is it? it, it it's Adam Smith, who really oh, is. Oh, shit. Adam Smith, if you want to talk about a professional goer outer, a guy <laughs> who knows how to go to. A establishment <laughs> yeah. for an evening of drinks. Mm. He has his own little bar set up outside. He'll go inside, grab a drink. He'll go outside. The guy knows how to run an evening. Mm. So post show, we hit the jackpot because post show, we go to this. It's a whiskey bar right across the street, mm. and I'm running around uh, just getting so much set for the theater show. I'm not even thinking about what, what's it going to be like when we go out afterwards. So they found this whiskey bar. It's literally right across the street, and we go. The beauty of this is that it's the one bar in LA that does not have any TVs. So it wasn't that well attended because the Dodger game was in like the 13th inning that night. Right. Yeah. And so we had our phones up watching the t- but watching on the on our screens, but we also got everybody in there. So it was like 20 people at the after party. So that was a whole lot of fun. Mm, that was really fun. Yeah. 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 Mm. I don't like when you call it the oh, Dodger game. Oh my god. Oh wait, so we found Adam? No, he just said boom. That was it. <laughs> it was in LA. It's got to be called the Dodgers. Oh, Adam just said boom. Really was yeah. the Red Sox okay. game. We well, understand that the Red Sox won. <laughs> uh, whole Roxy, series. Everybody knows the Red we Sox. We understand. The uh, world I knows. was at the game. It was oh, called the World Series. Clear. The yeah. Red Sox oh, wait, won. Were you there? <laughs> I was there at I the think, World Series. Just I, I think knows. Roka won. I think it's going to be fun because everybody's talking about that one story he talked about. So I think mm. now the onus is on John Roka to be like, do I want to continue to make that part of my inaugural five minutes? Or do I want to maybe get away from the poo joke and do something else? What so, would your advice be? My advi- The best advice I've ever received in stand-up is from a guy named Dane Cook. And Hell. he said, don't listen to anybody else. Wow. So that's kind of the advice. Like, like honestly, my one critique of Roka's set is simply don't run the light. Uh, what, what's that mean? Like you went too long yeah. after. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, yeah. They, they look at with you. me. They, they flashed that you. light a lot. Yeah. To be honest with you, cops, I could not see it from the stage because oh, of the because of the thing. Spotlight was yeah, too washed. It, it wasn't out. until he went to the bar and waved it that I finally saw it. I was like, that oh, was shit. Makuga. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. He flashed his flashlight <laughs> at you. Well, thank you, Josh, because I could not see that light with that spotlight in my eyes. I could not see that light to save my life. And yeah. it wasn't until Josh swung it that I was like, oh shit, okay, I've got a minute. Yeah, I wasn't backstage stewing. I'm just like, that's yeah. that's my one note. Do whatever you want on stage. Whatever you want. If you want to bring the belt on stage, mm-hmm. do it. If you want to do this, do whatever you want. It's your time to be an artist. Just right. like try to bottle it up into the time allotted. Yeah. And if like you learn this as you continue to do stand up, is that when you're in a new environment, you're in a different room, always make sure you know where the light is. If you have a set amount of time, mm-hmm. always make sure you know where the light is going to be coming from. So Good you point. just kind of think about that. And when you get the light, you try to give like a little. Yeah. Try to give a little head nod without giving. <laughs> Sometimes you see a young comic, like, it totally takes the audience out of the show because they can be crushing. Then they're like, yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> and it's like, no, don't, don't give away that. that you saw the light. The Comedy Store original room is it's the easiest place to see the light mm-hmm. because the light is on the side of the stage. It's a blue star that lights up. 
So when the blue star lights up, it means you have three minutes left. Mm-hmm. So everybody in the audience can see it. So if you're not having a good set, they know, oh, thank God. It's about time <laughs> That's awesome. to get this yokel off the stage. But So I, it's kind of like when we give a five-minute wrap, any show here at Collider, and everyone <laughs> looks at the camera, nods, and then goes back to their point. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All that right. sounds like a good Wait, cue how do you guys give a five-minute Go to break. Yeah. And here on the, this show, or, or no. hold up the sign. No, oh. just I'm talking about the show. Oh, yeah. 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 he's Let's probably talking about like literally right now because that's what we're about to do hey, is wow. go to break because we got the light, and I'm going to honor that. Unlike some people on Friday night, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're a great sport. Thank you for coming in here and just really Thank letting you. us see how the sausage of stand up is made from a newcomer's perspective. There's a lot of people in the office mm-hmm. that wish they could do, that have never attempted, that never want to attempt, that would never have the courage to do what you have done now. Yeah. Four to five times mm. and that is something Very that you can true. always keep with you the schmodown belt may change hands but you're always going to have this so thank, thank you, you for being a great sport and thank you for lending your talents on the stage